Hello everyone, and welcome to the second Dreams devlog. Today, we're gonna add some enemies, I'm gonna show off the layout for the platformer map, and we're also gonna finish off some of the things that I didn't get done in the previous devlog. Also, I know I said in the last devlog that I would start some boss design, but I realized there's a lot more to do in this devlog, so we won't have time for that. The first thing I want to work on is animating the sheep enemy that we made in the last devlog, then we're gonna add two new enemies. Let's start by animating the sheep enemy. I have a walking animation already made, and I can use the animator component that we used last time to animate the chamber just with a few adjustments. I'm gonna make it so that it walks as long as it's not hit, because it won't look good if it's walking while doing the jumping that it does when it gets hit. After working on this for a bit, I realized I didn't like the look of the animation I made, so I opened a sprite and started working on a new animation. I decided to just make it a basic leg up and leg down animation, which is really easy to make and I think it looks good. The next thing on the list was something exciting, adding a couple new enemies. The first enemy we will work on will chase the player when it is in range. There are a couple ways to do this. The first way is that I could use ASAR Pathfinding to do the pathfinding, or I could program it myself to just detect the player and then run towards the player. ASAR Pathfinding, for those of you who don't know what ASAR is, is an open source pre-made pathfinding asset for pretty much any game engine you can think of. I've used it before for this, but there are a couple problems with it. The problems with using ASAR is that I found it's more designed for top-down games or flying enemies, and it is harder to make so it's on the ground. I also I think it's too complex and I don't need a lot of the features that come with A-Star. Though, A-Star does have all the pathfinding built in, which me programming the enemy wouldn't have. What I ended up doing was programming the enemy myself, and I'm probably gonna add a flying enemy that I could use A-Star for. I started by using a placeholder graphic, a white square. Step one here is to make a way for the square to detect the player. I'm gonna use a large circle, and if the player is in that circle, then the enemy will chase them. I programmed this in, and it took me about 40 minutes. I was having a problem where it wouldn't stop when it was chasing the player, and it reaches the edge of a cliff, and would just end up falling down. This was happening because when the player was being chased, I forgot to make it flip around, which means that the rate cast to check that it would stop was behind it. I grabbed some code that I found online that flips the enemy towards the player, and it worked. Now that the enemy patrols and chases the player, I need to make it take damage and also damage the player. I just copied and pasted the damage system for my patrolling enemy and it worked fine, but I forgot how I made the other enemy take damage, so I just had to remind myself. Now it's time to design the enemy. I use a sprite for art, which I mentioned earlier, and most of my art is 16 by 16 pixels. In order to fit the enemy with the rest of the game, it's gonna need to be some kind of robot animal. I had to stop working at this point, so I spent some time thinking about what a good animal would be, and I decided on a bear. So I hopped into Ace Sprite and was initially having trouble making it look right, but eventually I got it. In my opinion, it just looks like a girthier version of the sheep enemy, but legally, it is a bear. Now I just need to implement this animation into Unity. I did this the same way that I made the chamber in the previous video, as there's only one animation. While doing this, I found a few weird bugs. If you ran into the bear, it would fly away, so I added some mass to fix it, and for some reason, the first hit wasn't registering. And this was because I forgot to set the timer in the script, which runs the function for damaging above zero. So when it would get hit, it would immediately stop the damage system and wouldn't take damage. One thing that I want to do, but I'm too lazy to do right now, is make an attack animation, but we'll get to that in a later devlog. The second enemy I want to add is a turret enemy. This enemy cannot move and will aim and shoot at the player. I already have a turret in the game, but this turret will be a bit different and it will also look really different. In order to keep it in theme, I'm I'm gonna make it a dragon. Once again, I'm gonna start with a white square, also a red triangle to show where it's aiming, and a turret enemy script. This took me a long time to program and for literally no reason. To this day, I still have no idea why my solution worked. I started by copy and pasting my look calculations shown on screen here for my dark lab turrets and for some reason this caused some strange bugs. While I finish explaining what I did, I'll show some bugs that happened while I was going through programming this. The dark lab turret calculation didn't work. So I tried some other ones from the internet, and they kept on stretching weirdly. I spent half an hour trying different things, but then finally I decided to look at the turret in the dark lab to see if I had built it differently. It is built in a hierarchy like this. Object that holds the programming, object that holds the base graphics, and object that holds the turret head, object that holds the turret head graphic. I didn't have this setup in my platformer turret, so I changed some of the objects and components around to make this formation, and it worked. 
Now it's time to draw up some art for the enemy. I designed it to be a pillar with a clear pipe in the middle that fills up with fire when it is about to shoot. I then designed a head for the dragon, which I think turned out great. Now we have one problem here. The dragon head looks at the player fine, but if the player goes to the other side of the dragon, it flips upside down. All I did to fix this was flip the sprite renderer whenever the player goes to the other side. Now it's time to make the turret shoot. The actual instantiation of the bullets will be easy to make because it's pretty much the same system I used to make the dark lab turret, but with this turret I made some animations for before it shoots and while it's shooting, so this took a little bit of extra implementing time. Once I got the shooting working, I started the animations. Putting together the animations didn't take too long, but the programming was what I worried about. The animations were split up between two animator components. One is the pillar and the other is the dragon head. The way the programming I made works is that it checks if the shoot shooting timer has half a second left, then sets an animator variable to fire, which plays the animation. The problem that arose from this was if the player left the range of the circle while the animation was playing, it wouldn't stop playing the animation. I fixed this by just setting the value to false in the fire variable whenever the player leaves the circle. The last thing I need to do to set up this enemy is make some art for the bullets, since I don't need to program them since I already have a bullet script. I designed them to be a fireball because, you know, dragon and all. Then I made a bullet prefab, attached to the bullet script and added a box trigger. The problem that I encountered is that in the bullet script, I had to rotate the object by 90 degrees for it to work in the dark lab, which causes a problem because now the bullets, when they shoot, they're facing downwards. I added a new object to the graphics and set it to 45 degrees, and somehow that worked. I then added a bit of polish by adding upwards knockback whenever the player gets hit. Moving away from enemies, let's take a moment and look at the map for the platformer area. So I want to give a quick rundown as to what the map for the platformer area is gonna look like. So I've labeled all the different areas that there are, and this is the first part. So there's gonna be two parts. There's gonna be this part, which is the outdoor part. Then we're actually gonna move into the factory area where you then face off with the final boss. You're gonna start here. So this is gonna be the first area, and this is the first level. And you move through a few levels, but then here you can actually choose to which. So you can either go down into the bunker or across. And this is gonna change what ending you get, because there is gonna be multiple endings. So if you go this way, you side with the people who are doing the experiment. If you go this way, you side with the humans. And I'll get further into the story as we get further on. So it might not make a ton of sense right now. If you take the experiment people, then you end up in the forest area and you go through these levels. But if you take the bunker, it actually splits off into either the cavern area or the underwater area. Each area right now, I've labeled them so that they have five levels, but I might do more, I might do less, depending on how easy the level building process is. And each of these ones with triangles or boss battles, so there's gonna be one boss battle no matter what path you do. That's gonna add some, a bit of replayability because you're gonna have to go back and unlock all the different paths in order to play through all the different boss battles. For example, the forest one, I was thinking of doing a ram, like, um, you know, one of the ram sheeps, because the first enemy in the starter area is a sheep, so I thought maybe king sheep or something like that. And then I could have, in the cavern area, maybe it's like a, a big worm or a mole or something. And then the underwater area, I'm gonna keep it a secret because I know what I'm doing for that, and I have been preparing something, but I kinda wanna keep it a little bit secret because I, I wanna make a devlog specifically for this boss. Then you go up, and into this level, which will then take you into the factory. And I haven't started playing the factory yet, but there will be a mini boss, which you will face, which is like a, a big robot. And then you face the main bad guy, which I covered previously, which is the builder. We're probably gonna start doing some level design soon. So each of these are gonna require a different tile map. So we'll have to make that and that's about it. Now let's work on some more generic stuff. In my previous devlog, I had a list of things to work on, and I have two things left on that list, parallax background and camera follow. Though, I have a few other things that I want to do, and I will add that to the list. Add extra conversations, button prompts for conversations, make area 1 and 2 more open, and add a death screen or some sort of thing to happen when you die. I'm determined now to get as much stuff done on this list as possible, and I'm gonna work from the bottom of the list to the top just so that I can get some of the smaller tasks out of the way, then finish with the larger tasks. It's totally not because I don't know how to do a parallax background. That means that first we need to make something happen when you die. In the second area, when the player dies, I want them to reset to the machine with a conversation that shows the player surprise when they die. In the platformer area, 
I will reset them to the start of the level with a similar conversation to the one in Area 2. Let's start by adding a method to trigger the combo and reset the player's position to the player health script. All I did to do this was change the transform variable to the starting position of the player while disabling the sprite renderer and re-enabling it after a second. I then made it so that it starts a text line whenever the player dies. Then, all I had to do was implement this into the platformer area, as all of this was in the dark lab. And then, the first thing on the list was done. The second thing on the list is to make areas 1 and 2 more open and give players some options on where to go. The easiest place to start is area 2 because it's just adding some new rooms and some turrets. I added a number of interconnecting rooms. The one problem is that none of them actually connected to the room with the lever, so I'll probably add on to it in future. Then I moved on to area 1. All I did was add an on another room beside the machine room and added a supply closet with some destroyed turrets, just for some lore. Third is the button prompts for the conversations. What I mean by this is right now when you need to press E to continue a conversation, nothing comes up. So a few of my playtesters were really confused about that. I made a button prompt for the office and the dark lab and made it turn on whenever the text completes. Then made it turn off whenever the player continues the conversation. Fourth, Wow, we're really getting through these. We're gonna add two new conversations for the NPCs that we can't speak to at the moment. These two NPCs are the random robot at the receptionist desk and the engineer in the machine room. Now, there are two other things left on that list. Parallax backgrounds and camera follow. The camera follow is easy because I already have a script for it. So I just need to import it and connect it. What's different about this camera follow script versus the one in the dark lab in the office is that the platformer script clamps the camera between two values so the player isn't always in the middle and so that the camera would stop when it reaches the top of the level. Now, the last thing on the list, and the last thing in this devlog, is adding a parallax background to the platformer area. Step one to this process was designing the background, so I hopped back into Ace Sprite and started drawing. I designed it to have the city that we see so often, cough cough, in the background with some hills and some water in front of it. This actually took forever to draw and export because I kept realizing that I made a mistake and would have to re-import it. Eventually, I got it in and started programming the parallax effect. I found a tutorial by Danny from back in 2019, and I can tell you, he seemed very different from how he is now. I noticed a few problems, like how the city is cut off at the bottom, but right now I'm gonna leave it in for future coal because I'm kind of lazy. And now we've reached the end of this devlog. I think we got a lot more done today than in the previous devlog, as I added two new enemies, kicked down the list of things I didn't accomplish in the previous devlog, made the first and second area bigger, and now we're even ready to start making some levels for the platformer area. Anyways, thank you for watching this second Dreams devlog. I hope you enjoyed, and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more videos. I forgot to say that in the past two videos, so go back to those videos and hit the like button. Thank you for watching and have a good day.